Hello everyone and welcome back to the Milu project. Today we're in Paraguay and we'll be exploring a very intriguing language, Guarani. Before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe if you are enjoying this series. And if you're new here, be sure to check out our journeys across Chile, Argentina and Bolivia. Anyway, let's begin. The Guarani language is spoken by about 6.5 million people in Bolivia, Argentina, Brazil and Paraguay, a mostly bilingual country, where both Spanish and Guarani are spoken. Guarani belongs to the Tupi Guarani language family, which has members from as far as northern Brazil and southern Colombia. So let's get exploring this language. We'll first look at the phonology. Well, these are the consonants. Instead of just using regular oral stops, the voice stops are pre-nasalized. We also see some alveolopalatal sounds, as well as labiovelar ones. And most of the sounds have something called nasal allophones, but we'll talk a bit more about that later. These are the vowels, Nothing too much out of the ordinary. Although notice the absence of the schwa. Well, that's because unstressed syllables in Guarani only decrease in loudness, not in vowel quality like many other languages do. There are also nasal variations to these vowels. And speaking of nasals, Guarani loves them. You see, Guarani does something called nasal harmony, which means that if one syllable is nasalized, the others will probably become nasalized too. Some other languages do this, but not to the same extent. And because of this, Guarani uses something called allomorphs. Since Guarani distinguishes between oral and nasal sounds, an allomorph is the nasalized or oralized version of an affix. As we can see in these examples, the oral initials of the affixes turn into nasal ones. This can also happen with vowels because nasal harmony in Guarani affects all sounds. But what about stress? Well, in Guarani, stress normally falls on the last syllable of a word unless a morpheme is inherently stressed or unstressed. And unlike many other languages, unstressed syllables never change in vowel quality. Instead, they're said quieter, but for the same duration. Now, let's look at nominals. In Guarani, nouns can be paired with adjectives, articles, demonstratives, numerals, and a whole host of other modifiers. For example, the suffix eta pluralizes the nouns. However, unlike roughly a quarter of the world's languages, Guarani doesn't use grammatical gender. Instead, it uses markers to distinguish between genders, like in these examples. Now this word might look familiar to you. Yes, it's the word Jaguar. It actually comes from a Tupi Guarani language spoken in southern Brazil and meant something like a wolf or beast. But once it was adopted into Brazilian Portuguese, it began to refer to a specific type of panther. This word then made its way into English. A similar story holds true for the word piranha. But we're getting a little off track here. Guarani uses something called relational roots, which essentially tie the nouns to suffixes, prefixes, and other words in the sentence. And the letter used can also vary based on intended use. 
For example, when T is used, like in this example, it marks the non-possessed form. H indicates the third person possessor, and the initial R is used for all other cases. There are also some normalizing suffixes, like ha, hara, and va. Ha just has the simple task of turning verbal bases into nouns. Although, it can also indicate a place where an action takes place, like in this example. The suffix hara is used to show profession. For example, by combining the words for to plant, seed, and the suffix hara, one can create the word farmer. And the suffix wa is used to form adjectives. It's not used regularly because nouns in Guarani can function like adjectives, but it's often used to make demonstratives, like in this example. We also have the suffix kue, which denotes abstract qualities. And by adding it, the adjective strong is transformed into the noun, strength. Diminutives are formed by the suffix me, and attenuatives, which often function similar to the English word ish, are formed with the suffix v. Now on to demonstratives. Guarani uses a system similar to Japanese for its demonstratives. It distinguishes between entities close to the speaker, close to the listener, or far from both with singular and plural variations for each demonstrative. However, it also has this set of demonstratives, which are used to talk about shared knowledge or something other than the topic being discussed. Now, we can finally talk about verbs. Verbs are formed by verbal roots, most of which are not derived from nouns. And whilst in English, Marking the future is optional, but marking the past is necessary. In Guarani, the opposite is true. The future tense must be marked. But there's usually a bit of ambiguity between the present and the past. Usually though, telic verbs, that is verbs with a natural endpoint, are interpreted as being in the past. And verbs which don't have a natural endpoint are often in the present tense. The future tense is marked by the suffix ta and negated by the suffix mo oin. The affix ta can also show a lack of knowledge or epistemic modality, whilst the suffix in this example shows either an obligation to do something or a kind of future in the past. In terms of aspect, Guarani has a lot. There's a perfective, imperfective, intermittent, progressive, completive, habitual, and that's just scratching the surface. In terms of mood, Guarani only has the indicative, subjunctive, and imperative. However, it does make up for this using a number of modalities, such as the volatative, optative, desiderative, as well as a number of different voices to convey how an entity perceived or accomplished a task. And since you watched to the end, here's a conjugation table of the verb, to walk. You can see here that the morphology is fully concatenative, unlike English, and verbs in Guarani are conjugated with infixes and prefixes, instead of suffixes. Anyway, that's all for this week. If you enjoyed or found this episode useful, please consider subscribing as it really helps. So join us next week as we continue to venture across South America.